Chapter 11, Lesson 9, Essential Question. How can you find the volume of a rectangular prism? Connect. The base of a rectangular prism is a rectangle. That's why it's called a rectangular prism. You know that the area is measured in square units, or units squared, with the little two. And that the area of a rectangle can be found by multiplying the length and the width. Now the two can connect because you're only multiplying two numbers. And so that's why you have area measured as squares. Volume is measured um, in cubic units or units cubed. That's the exponent three here. When you build a prism and add each layer of cubes, you are adding a third dimension, height. So we have this three here because we have the length, the width, and height. So keep that in mind. And here we can even look right here. So the area of the base of their rectangle is one, two, three wide and one, two, three, four long. So that is a three by four units and squared, so a 3 by 4, 3 times 4 is 12. So the area of the actual rectangle is 12 square units. Now moving on to unlock the problem. Sid built the rectangular prism shown at the right using 1 inch cubes. The prism has a base that is a rectangle and has a height of 4 cubes. What is the volume of the rectangular prism that Sid built? So they're asking you find the volume of the prism and um, they don't specifically say but right here they said it's a rectangle and th it's the same base that we figured out up here. So the width and the length are 3 by 4 so the area is 12 and then the height is 4 cubes and I circled one inch cubes so that we knew that each cube represented just one inch. So um, we can find the volume of the whole prism um, in cubic units by multiplying the number of square units in the base shape by the number of layers or its height. So the number of square units, this is just finding length and width. So this is just finding the length times width for the base shape, which was the rectangle. And right here, it's a 4 by 3. So that's where they get the 12. And now the third dimension is the height. So if this bottom layer's area is 12, if we add just one more layer, it's the exact same length and width that it's 12 as well and this third layer is going to be 12 and this fourth layer is going to be 12 and so it's just going to be added to. So each layer of SID's rectangular prism is composed of 12 inch cubes. So how is the volume going to change? They set up a table so if there's one layer it the volume is 12 because 4 times 3 times 1. The second layer it would be 4 times 3 times 2 layers so 12 and 12 is going to be 24. See if you can figure out the volume for a third layer and a fourth layer and then if you can finish the rule. So if you finished it, um, your third layer, oops, your third layer is going to be 12 plus 12 plus 12 because it's three groups of 12, 36, and then your fourth layer would be 48. So then if you're looking for your pattern for your numbers, you would multiply the height, so the how many layers that were, by the area. And what was the area that we were multiplying by it was 12. So let's look at number one here. How does the volume change as each layer is added? 
So the volume blank by the number of cubic units, which are the cubes, in each layer. And that, so it was 12, because there's actually 12 cubes here. So does that volume increase, decrease, stay the same? It increases. Number two. What does the number you multiply the height by represent? So in that question, they're just asking, if the height was 3, we're multiplying it by what number? And what does that number represent? So it is the blank, length times width, of the base shape. So if you multiply just length times width of a shape, what are you finding? You are finding the area of the base shape. So now let's just answer the question. What is the volume of his prism in um, cubed inches? We have a length times width of 4 and 3, so that's 12, and 4 layers, so 4 times 3 times 12. That means that the area of his rectangular prism is 48 inches cubed. Let me rewrite that. 48 inches cubed. Tony stacks cube-shaped beads that measure one centimeter on each edge in a storage box. The box can hold six layers of 24 cubes with no gaps or overlaps. What is the volume of Tony's storage box? You're being asked to find the volume, and right over here it says, what are the dimensions of the base of the box? We know that it's six layers of 24 cubes, so that bottom layer has 24 cubes. There's a few different dimensions it could be, Really, any multiplication um, factor pair that add up to 24 could be the dimensions. I'm going to use 4 centimeters and 6 centimeters, but if you used 8 and 3 or 12 and 2, you're going to end up with the same volume. And we used the operation of multiplication, and we did a length times width. So one way is to use the base and height. And so with base, they're just talking about the, the area of the base shape, which is a length times width. So the volume of each bead is one centimeter cubed because it's a one by one by one. And so a one and a one and a one, one times one times one equals one. The storage box has a base with an area of... 24, because they told us that right here. It's 24 cubes, and so if we had a 6 by 4 by 1 layer, that would be the 24. So then, what's the height of it? The height of it, they told us it was 6 layers, so that's 6 centimeters, because they're 1 centimeter boxes. The next step is to plug it in. So the base area was 24 and the height was 6, so 24 times 6 equals, what's our volume? So 24 times 6 equals 144, and then it's centimeters cubed, so that's the volume. Another way is to just use the length times width and height. And so we know the area, and I said that I was going to be using the length of 6 centimeters and the width of 4 centimeters. And then the height, we knew was six layers, so that's six. And so the volume, the base area, was a six times four, and the height was six. And then you do the parentheses first, six times four is 24, times six, and again, you get 144. So your volume is 144 centimeters cubed. And it's important that you have that three in there. Looking at your what if. What if each cube shaped bead measured two centimeters on each edge? How would the dimensions of the storage box change and how would the volume change? So here we have each dimension would blank by what? So if they were two centimeters instead of one, what would happen to each dimension? And then what would the dimensions be and what would the new volume be? Press pause and see if you could answer that.
your length would increase to 12, the width would be 8, and the height would be 12, because you would have to multiply what you were given by 2. So you plug those in, the length times width times height, and your volume should be 1,152 centimeters cubed. And again, it's very important that you have that 3 there as an exponent so that they know you're talking about volume. For your share and show, you have three problems to work through. Problem 1 walks you through each steps um, to think about it. And then volume 2, they just or number 2 and 3, they just give you a picture. And I would like you to write out um, the numbers that you're multiplying and with your answer. And make sure that you get your label correct. Press pause while you work. For number one, they ask the or they say the length of the rectangle prism is blank. Now, some people would write four, some people would write five. It doesn't really matter. Um, you may choose which one you want to use as your length. I'm gonna write down number or the number five inches, and then the width because I think horizontal right here. So the width right here is going to be four inches. I'm writing my inches so that I know what I'm measuring in. And that gives us the length and the width of the base, of the bottom. And so we can come up with the area of our base. 4 times 5 equals 20 inches and then squared because we only multiplied the two dimensions to get the flat area that it covers. Now we're going to add the height. Well, the height is 6 inches right here, and that's going to add our third dimension. So we have 20 times 6, which is 120 inches, but now it changes to cubed with the 3 because we're, we've multiplied 3 dimensions, 3 different numbers. Moving on to number 2. So I asked you to also write out the three numbers that you multiplied. So again, length times width. Um, I'm going to take the, the two centimeters and the three centimeters. And then my height is also three centimeters. So I have two times three, which is the area of my base. So that's six times three, which is going to equal 18. So I'm going to have 18 centimeters. And my exponent is the 3 because it's cubed. I multiplied the three dimensions to get that. So 18 centimeters cubed. Last one is number 3, the volume. We have, again, what were the three numbers that we're multiplying? Thinking, you need to find length and width, the area of the base. So I have my 2 and my 6. 2 times 6, and then what's my height? How high does this go? It actually only has the 1 layer, and so I'm going to do a times 1. 2 times 6 equals 12 times 1. 12 times 1 is 12. Now what's my label? Well, inches, so I in, and what's my exponent? Well, I multiplied three numbers, three dimensions, length, width, and height, and so it is a 3 cubed, 12 inches cubed. Just a brief look at the math talk. We've been talking about it. So why? The, explain why the exponent 2 is used to express the measure of area, and the exponent 3 is used to express the measure of volume. See if you can kind of write a quick sentence right here. So just to sum up what it is, um, in area we multiply only two dimensions, length and width. In volume we multiply three, length, width, and height. And now you know how to find the volume of a rectangular prism.